This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hello everyone, my name is Jaakko Takalo and uh, I'm a game artist from Finland. In this video I'm going to briefly discuss my methods of creating this stylized brick wall material. I made this in, in Substance Designer, but I also used some ZBrush. Yes, the whole thing started with me wanting to try out a new technique uh, in creating a stylized material. And uh, I had some inspiration from Overwatch. I went into, into the game and um, took some screenshots of the, of the brick walls in the game and tried to analyze how they did it. Even though my texture doesn't really look like any of these three here, I still wanted to try and understand like the, the ideas uh, beneath it all. So as you can see from this map in Overwatch, the bricks, some of these are kind of crooked and, you know, protruding from the wall. And I was thinking, how could I achieve something like this myself using Substance Designer? So I'm just going to quickly walk you through here. So basically what I did was um, I used the tile generator uh, to create uh, this tiling texture of these bricks. But where those tiles come from is, is, a, is an interesting solution because I don't use like the traditional methods you would use in Substance Designer to create the bricks. Instead, I used ZBrush to get the basic shapes. So I started off with a, with a simple shape, like a brick shape. And I started to work on the edges and to, to cut, it, cut it into shape. And I tried to have it look different from all, all angles because I, need these, I needed these four angles uh, for Substance Designer. So I started to cut the shape and then I used the Trim Dynamic brush to work some more on the edges and all the while thinking about how to keep it stylized. So I didn't want to go too realistic with this. So this is pretty much where I, this is pretty much all the detail I, uh, I put on the, on the edges. And finally I add some like rocky texture with some of the orb brushes to this rock here, this stone tile. So when I had this done, I pressed the P BPR render button in, in ZBrush, which renders it. And, uh, I made sure that I had this uh, this document or canvas size at 1K. And when when you render out your your mesh, you go to render and press this depth button. And what this does is it creates uh, like a depth render from your from your mesh, and it results in something like this. So I created four of these uh, these type of images all from different angles and so that I get some variation and uh, then I took some some other ones where I tilted the the stone brick into a, into into another position so that I can get those weird looking or protruding or crooked bricks that I I had in my in my reference so you can render something like this and then, for example, something like this. And then you end up with a handful of, uh, of textures you can start with in Substance Designer. What I had 
were these four brick shapes with the height information. And they are all from the same brick, but from different sides. So they are a bit different from each other. And you put those into the uh, tile generator and that creates your texture. And basically, if I were to just take away all the color and have it as white, you can see that the, it's basically done by uh, by only having those uh, height maps from or depth maps from from ZBrush. So all the detail is there, and I don't have to do it in in Substance Designer. Obviously, the one of the downsides of this is that you cannot really you know alter this <laughs> this texture other than changing the other than to change the you know, order of the bricks. So it doesn't really uh, go well with the meaning of procedural generation, but uh, that's what I wanted to try here. And I think it's a quick way of creating something that actually works. So I have those four uh, images input uh, go into the tile generator. As you can see from this, uh, this texture, there are like a few weird pieces that come out like this. So this one is like a bit crooked here and um, there's there's one here that looks like it's almost falling out from there. And there's one that's a bit sideways. So how I did those was that I took those uh, renders like I talked about and uh, use those bitmaps and blend them in to the already gen uh, generated tiling texture. So if you can see the first blend node, I blend this uh, shape in and I transform it into a place. So if I move this, you can see it moving on the 3D view. And I find a sweet spot for it. And I think that looks like a perfect place for it. So that uh, end up, ends up looking, there's like a little variation that goes in, comes from the, from the texture. So it doesn't look that, uh, monotonous. So basically, this is the whole detail version of the of the whole texture. And it all practically comes from, from these four uh, images that I created uh, in ZBrush. So it's a, it's a kind of a quick process. What I do in in Substance Designer is basically add the colors and make them brick style. So let's talk about the colors. Uh, for the colors, I started with the clouds generator, noise generator, and just put on a simple gradient map. And I made two uh, versions that are sim uh, slightly different color, and I uh, just blend them together. And um, oh, let's put this here. So I blend those colors together. And then I add, uh, add some uh, more details or some randomness to, to it. And um, I am, I'm a huge fan of the, like a hand painted texture feel. So I think the, the slow blur uh, node works really well for that. So I slow blur the, the texture to give it some, like a feeling of like it's hand painted. So once I have this basic color, I then directionally warp it in order to create like, a, to have this individual tiles show. There's a few other tricks I use here as well in order to add some, add some like edge highlights and uh, to make the top parts lighter and the bottom parts, uh, part, the bottom parts uh, more dark. But the, for those, you can actually look at the um, uh, the Overwatch material studies by Alexander Galloway. So you can download those for free and actually see how he did those. So that's a great resource for if you want to go deeper into that. So I'm going to skip it here. So in the end, this is the this is the texture that I have. So if you look just at the uh, 
the color, the base color texture, the diffuse map, you can see that it actually kind of works by itself. So I think that's a good, I think that's a good indicator that uh, it's a working uh, stylized material because only the, you can look only at the diffuse map and see what's going on. Even though this uses normal maps and roughness and all that, but still, I think what matters the most is is the uh, is the diffuse map. So one of the challenges that I had with this texture was with the with the colors. So I wanted to create a like a stylized material. So you know, it's a you can pretty much make anything and just call it stylized, but in order to make something look good when it's stylized, it's it's hard. And I think that this this could be improved a lot. I think that um, the bricks I made too detailed, for example, and for the just the colors, I think this could have more definition but uh, I think this works really well as a starting point for a material that can be used and uh, even though it's not really procedural you can't go you can't go and change the how the bricks look that easily you can change the colors and uh, try to work on the on the diffuse map itself because that's what I think matters the most here. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you learned something. And uh, I want to thank Thomas from Stylite Station for inviting me to make this video. I'm happy to help. And uh, see you next time. <laughs>